and it is during that time that the thrust changes. Uh, we were just given some information that the astronauts were beginning to throttle their engines up to maximum thrust just about the time the explosion occurred. And they, after that, they throttled down to a 60% level uh, to reduce the force. So during the period of the explosion was during the period of maximum thrust with the space shuttle and one of the two most dangerous periods during the entire mission. Well, Bruce, uh, the commander of this particular space shuttle Challenger flight was Francis Dick Scobie. And as best anyone uh, can make out his uh, final words to mission control before that tremendous fireball after launch this morning, were, his final words were, quote, Roger, go at throttle up. Uh, could you translate that for us? Does that mean go to full throttle? That normally means go to full throttle, something that they're doing 35 seconds into the launch. 35 seconds after they leave the pad, they go to full throttle, and they will remain at full throttle through the separation of the solid rocket boosters. And that is most likely what he meant at that time. And there is no indication from NASA that they had any indication, and there's no indication there's any communication from the crew indicating they knew of any difficulties prior to the explosion itself. Now, Dan, I also must tell you that while they have been on the pad, we've had 25 launches of the space shuttle. Ten different times we've had mechanical delays which have required a delay of at least one day in the launch. Six different times we have had delays with uh, weather problems. So 16 different times we have had delays on the launch pad prior to the launch itself. But we, of course, have never had anything happen like we had today. Bruce, uh, Chris, uh, Krista McAuliffe's parents, Krista McAuliffe being the school teacher from Concord, New Hampshire, who was aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger flight this morning, uh, her parents, Edward and Grace Corrigan, were among those from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration VIP site, site uh, about three and a half miles from the launch pad. When they realized what had happened, the school teacher's parents hugged each other and cried. NASA officials shielded them immediately from spectators. I told you earlier the story about uh, the children at the school where Christopher, uh, Krista uh, McAuliffe taught uh, seeing the launch and applauding as uh, Space Shuttle Challenger got off the pad and then watching in horror that uh, awful fireball. Uh, and then immediately after that, uh, all media people, press people, understandably, were uh, escorted from the school, and the children uh, were escorted back to their various classrooms. They'd been gotten together for the specific purpose of, of watching the uh, liftoff this morning. We do have photographs of the crew, uh, uh, pictures taken this morning of the crew uh, before the uh, liftoff and the launch pad, as Bruce said, the crew was allowed to sleep in a little later this morning because uh, there was anticipated some delays in the preparation. If we have those uh, on videotape now, perhaps uh, we uh, can and should uh, take a look at them. Well, we may not have them available just at, uh, Good at this morning. moment. No, here they are. This is Krista McAuliffe, live from the Challenger. This excited, nervous school teacher is polishing the lesson she will teach from outer space. Yeah, so I can explain to the kids <clears throat> that everything has to be held down because otherwise... School children from all over the country will tune in on public television. Quite a change from a year ago, when our biggest audience was the social studies class at Concord High School in New Hampshire. McAuliffe became one of America's best-known teachers when she was picked from more than 11,000 applicants to be the first private citizen to get a ride on the shuttle. I thought there was never going to be any more excitement. I mean, I could never peak any higher than I had on July 19th, and it just keeps building. <laughs> she hopes her trip is going to spread the idea that space is for everyone, and especially the students in today's classrooms. The call of had to become a student all over again, learning how to be an astronaut, where a sleek T-38 jet can serve as the study hall. It was wonderful. He broke the sound barrier, and he let me fly for a while. There were many lessons to be learned, fighting fires, and driving the emergency escape vehicle. There are a lot of students back at Concord High School who would love to have that opportunity. <laughs> she has become a hero back in Concord and her husband has become a space enthusiast. If I could nudge her aside and climb board, I think it'd be a fight. <laughs> and there's also a little competition from daughter Caroline. I think it's neat to go into outer space. It doesn't seem possible. It was an emotional experience 
as she watched the launch of the shuttle last October. Oh, it's hidden beautiful! <laughs> she thinks it will be even more beautiful when she can share the experience with the nation's school children. <laughs> Bruce Hall, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. Gordon McRae, who starred in the movie musicals Oklahoma and Carousel, died today in Lincoln, Nebraska. He'd been suffering from cancer and pneumonia. McRae starred in radio and television, but he may be best remembered as Curly, the love-struck cowboy of Oklahoma. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, oh. The Challenger was to enter a period of peak aerodynamic pressure when wind and other conditions would be exerting the maximum force on the shuttle and when they were about to throttle up again to full power on the engines. Recovery vehicles off the coast of Florida apparently spotted debris. They were delayed getting into the area they wanted to reach because of some of the debris, but so far, no word of any survivors. And to note again, the, uh, this particular shuttle was not equipped with any ejection seats. Bill Plant is standing by at the White House uh, to recap for us uh, what has happened this morning. But before we go to Bill, Bill Plant, uh, let me uh, again take, uh, make use of our scale model here so we uh, get the best understanding that we possibly can of uh, what you see when we show you the videotape of the launch uh, and the explosion in air. This is the configuration scale model of the space shuttle as it sits on the launch pad. This being the space shuttle, this being its main fuel tank, these two being the solid rocket boosters. Now, what happens on the launch pad is the solid rocket boosters have the primary responsibility for uh, getting the space shuttle, the whole configuration, off of the pad. Remember that you have uh, uh, basically three uh, engine sources, primary engine sources. You have the two solid rocket boosters off to the side. The space shuttle itself has these engines, which is hard to see, but right down in here behind it, but those engines have to have fuel. And of course, this is the large fuel tank. The solid rocket boosters alone are not enough to get the space shuttle into orbit. The solid rocket boosters get it off the pad, point it toward orbit, then the solid rocket boosters are supposed to fall away off to the side, and the space shuttle with its engines down here, drawing on fuel from this huge tank, takes itself on into toward orbit, eventually drops away its main fuel tank, and then the space shuttle goes on into orbit uh, with its small engines in the, in the tail of it back here. Now, this morning, when the explosion happened, it was only a minute and 12 seconds in the launch. The whole apparatus, the last anybody saw before the great fire, fireball, was in place and doing its job. The solid rocket boosters carrying uh, the, the shuttle uh, toward its orbit, but only a minute and 12 seconds in, and it was as Bruce Hall told us earlier, one of the two or three most dangerous periods of any launch. Now, with that information, uh, as best I can pass it along to you, let's take a look at the videotape as to what happened uh, after launch this morning. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine start, 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Good roll program confirmed. Challenger now heading down range. Engines beginning throttling down now at 94 percent. Normal throttles uh, for most of the flight, 104 percent. We'll throttle down to 65 uh, percent shortly. Engines at 65 percent, three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Velocity 2,257 feet per second. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles, downrange distance three nautical miles. Throttling up, three engines now at 104 percent. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, nine nautical miles. Downrange distance, seven nautical miles.
videotape of what remained of the space shuttle after that tremendous fireball explosion. Flight controllers here looking very carefully at the situation. Obviously a major malfunction. What remains of Space Shuttle Challenger plunging toward the sea off Cape Canaveral? <laughs> 